Welcome to another exciting edition of So Into Bourbon. Live from Charlie's basement. What are we doing tonight, Charlie? Oh, sorry, we're doing Old Forester tonight, which I'm uh, super excited about. Why are you excited about this, Charlie? Glad you asked that question, Glenn. Um, Old Forester is one of my favorite distilleries, and Old Forester is kind of unique in the sense that they have one mash bill, and that's it. Just one? Just one. Just one. One for their bourbon. There's got to be. No, that's no. ridiculous. One for their bourbon. There's got to be another mash bill. Nope. One for their bourbon and one for their rye, and that's it. 72% corn, 18% rye, and 10% malted barley, and that's it. Not even the birthday bourbon, which is so sought after, has another mash bill? No. Wow. And so that means the only difference that you're going to have in their different expressions and their different releases is age and proof. That's it. So basically they follow the formula of, hey, we do this really well and why, why fix something that isn't broken? Don't rock the boat. So right. in 2020, I believe, they celebrated their 150th anniversary of the first bottled bourbon. Um, that's a bottle that was sealed to prevent people from messing with it, pouring it out, and pouring other stuff in. Kind of a big deal in the bourbon world at that time. Pretty big deal. Yeah. So they've, to Glenn's point, is uh, let's not rock the boat. We got a good thing going here for 150 years. Let's keep, uh, keep going with that. Yeah, absolutely. And I think uh, just overall, Old Forester is highly regarded as a just a good overall, all purpose, general yes. whiskey. I, I, I love Old Forester because it runs the spectrum of what are you drinking and why. So if you want a good old fashioned, they're 86 proof, or if you want a little proofier cocktail, they're 100 proof. Excellent in cocktails. Or the rye. Or their rye. Their, their Excellent rye, rye is unbelievable. That's another story for another episode. But the bourbons are just, there's something for everyone. Um, and it's all the same mash bill. So you can really kind of cater to your proof and age that you uh, like to drink. And very reasonably priced. This Absolutely. isn't a bourbon that you're going to hide from your guests. Yeah. You can um, go into most retailers and find at least some offering of Old Forester somewhere. All right, so what do we have? What, what, what are we sampling tonight? So the first one we're gonna drink is a very popular offering of theirs. It's part of their Whiskey Row selection, and this is their 1910. Um, it's a celebration of the 1910. There's a hang tag on it, you can read all about it. We are not going to do the history of Old Forester because Come on, on Charlie. honestly, we don't have enough time. Like this is a brand and a bourbon steeped in history and they have very detailed records and we're just not going to do that because this is not a class and you're not getting course credit for it. And if you want to know all that, come to Louisville, right downtown, Old Foresters, right there on Main Street. It's an excellent, excellent distillery uh, tour. We call that Whiskey Row. Whiskey Row, that's that's Hence the right. Whiskey Row selection. And we'll talk about that more in the episode. But the 1910, uh, 93 proof. Uh, this bottle a couple of years ago actually had a shortage where it got really popular made it um, and you couldn't find it anywhere and people were kind of hoarding it. It was a weird thing um, in, a, in a moment in time, but um, a lot of people are like, why? Why are people hoarding 1910? And then when you drink it, you're like, okay, I get it. So that's what we're going to do tonight. I haven't had 1910 in a long time. I've had this bottle for probably a year just sitting in my bar um, that I just never opened after I drank my other. So yeah, it's been a while since I've had it too. So I'm so it'll be kind of a, a new uh, sampling for us. So uh, shall we examine some color? We shall, Charlie. Deep, deep amber. Yes, deep amber. Uh, beautiful color on that. Um, nice legs, sticks to the glass really nicely. Yeah. And we do or do not have an age statement? No age statement no on age statement. No age statement. Mmm. Chocolate. <laughs> like just <laughs> bam. Yeah. Chocolate. It's, hits you right up front. Sweet chocolate. Very sweet. Chocolate covered cherries, maybe. Mm. Very little ethanol, which you shouldn't yeah. have on a 93 proof, but there's a uh, little, but I'm really you know. surprised at that nose. That was not what I was expecting. Um yeah, that I could live in there. 
I'm, I'm a little oak in there as well. It's nice. It's nice. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Let's, Cheers. Let's drink that good smelling bourbon. That, my friends, without going into the tasting notes, is a bottle that you should go out and try to find right this flipping second. Absolutely, and you shouldn't have any trouble finding it. Yeah, I um, hope not, but that is so good. Yeah, uh, burnt sugar, a little bit of oak, a little char, a little smoke. Keep going. Um, very smooth. All the flavors. Yeah, a little <laughs> sweetness. It's got, yeah, yeah just a well-rounded, balanced. All um, the flavors. You get a little bit of everything you want in that. Mm. Yeah. Um, the first thing I get is like sweet and kind of a coffee. And I, I never get, like I, I hear people um, tasters with much better palates than mine will be like, oh, you get kind of that coffee, coffee barrel, like sweet chocolate coffee, like a, a chocolate covered coffee bean. A hundred percent. Yeah. 100%. In this one. Like it, it is so good. There's some fruit finish on it, a little bit of spice. Yeah. Just, just enough spice. Yes. Yeah. So good. Like. And just enough heat. It's not, yeah. it's not really hot, but there's just enough there to for 93 proof to to let you know you're drinking it. Yeah, I, I will go out on a limb and kind of jumping. I'm very excited about drinking this one. Um, that's one of the better bottles of bourbon that I have drank and, and maybe we have drank I would in, agree. in a while. Mm -hmm. And that's a shelfer. Yeah, very reminiscent of some of the other very affordable selections that you used to be able to get easily. And yeah. now you can't. Yeah, uh, your Heaven Hill bottled yeah. and bond six year that you love so much that you can't get anymore. I would I would put this up there yeah. in that realm. I'm um, gonna go this week and buy a couple more bottles of that just to squirrel it away because yeah. I that is so good. And this is again what makes bourbon fun. I have had 1910 numerous times before. I've I've drank and my friends have drank at least a bottle if not more here. Um, that's why I didn't have one open. I don't remember it being that good. No, so much more. I'm getting so much more chocolate now. Yeah. Which yeah, I I have a tendency to do that once you've had your first sip yeah. or two. Kind of wakes the palate kind of, up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It, it's uh, and cherries. I'm picking up cherries. Here I go. Just <laughs> but that's <laughs> name off more. That's what's great about a, a good bottle is as you drink it, mm -hmm. it should become you, your palate kind of wakes up and you want some more complexity that comes out of there, that is a really, 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 really good bottle yeah. of bourbon. Um, I'm glad we drank this tonight I because I, <laughs> I've kind of laid off the Old Forester I, for a while. It used to be just a staple in yeah. my house. It, I Same. always had a bottle of Old Forester, and it's been a while since, since I have, so definitely going to um, go out and, and get another bottle of this. So we haven't done our... Um, Sink it or drink it or pour it or store it in I a think, while. So yeah. obviously this is gonna be a drinker. Drink it and store it. Like sure. that's, man. Yeah, as, as of now, it's, it's not one that's hard to find, but who knows, maybe in the future. I, maybe. I learned long ago that if you find something that is genuinely, that out, out punches way outside of its weight class, like, okay, this is a $40 bottle of bourbon, but it's great and it's something that I could drink for the rest of my life buy a couple extra bottles because especially in this market, in this economy, in this bourbon economy that we have, which is now a global economy, you don't know what's going to happen with something like that. And we have seen it time and time again, whether it's the Heaven Hill Six Year Bottled in Bond or Old Fitzgerald that used to be a $10 bottle of Bottled in Bond. And now it's the old Fitzgerald offering right. is in a decanter and it's hundreds of dollars. Now, granted, it's a special release, but you know, that's what these distilleries and these companies are, are trying to make these decisions on. So something that is that good, have an extra yeah. or two or two. Go out, get a bottle of it, try it. If you yeah. love it, get more of it. 
Man. If you love it, get more of it. If you love Look, it, we're get making more. up rhymes as we go. It's not a rhyme, it's a catchphrase. <laughs> Let's, uh, and right. it rhymes. And it rhymes. Let's finish this off and get into the next one, mm -hmm. Charlie. While you're finished with yours, while I'm finishing mine, maybe tell them a little bit about what we're going to try next. Yeah, so Old Forester, and one of the reasons and one of the things that really got me into Old Forester is a few years ago, specifically, the prevalence of Old Forester single barrel offerings. Now, at the time, they were only 90 proof. They usually ran you between $29 and $39, but they were single barrel. 90 proof offerings and they were always so unique and there was never any shortage of them at least for us around louisville and it took me a while to kind of you, you take something for granted when you see it a lot you just assume it's not special right if they've got a store pick and they've got a store pick and they've got a single barrel and then after a while i was like you know what i'm going to pick this one up and i'm going to try that one and when you start comparing them and you see how diverse those barrels are keeping in mind, they're all the same mash bill. Mm -hmm. And most of them are coming from the same one or two rack houses, and it's the same distillery, and you're getting so many different flavors out of a 90 proof. Um, that's what really got me kind of hooked. So the 90 proofs, unfortunately, as I was just mentioning, have gone away. They are no longer doing 90 proof single barrels. Now they're doing 100 proof single barrels or barrel proof single barrels, which is what you see before you, that beautiful blue label. This is a Beastmasters single barrel selection. Hence the awesome sticker. If you don't know about Beastmasters, and they're a topic for another episode, give them a Google. They are one of the original single barrel selectors from New York. Uh, but this is their offering. Um, this is a 132.4 proof. Ooh. Trying to get me drunk, Charlie. I love this. I love everything about this. So again, yeah. what we're comparing is really the only differences between age and proof. This is a four and a half year old single barrel. Um, and we're going to see how this kind of oh, mm -hmm. compares to can't the give you any applause on that one, Charlie. Well, you know what? They can't all be winners. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> don't overdo it. Light pour on this one. Well, that's all right. If you don't drink it, you can always sink it. Catchphrase. Patent pending not to be used without the written consent of <laughs> so in a bourbon. All right. Shall we examine our single barrel. You know what's interesting to me right off the bat with this one? Not quite as deep a color? Exactly. I, you would expect the barrel proof to be much darker. Yeah, than, than the batched. Yes, yeah. and it's not. It's, I don't know that it's it, any darker to be honest with you. It, it's, it's close in color, but I feel like it's a little lighter. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean it. So it, what, what would account for that? Maybe it's uh, aged less? I don't know. Yeah, don't it's know. possible. I mean, it, it just, who knows? I mean, that's the great thing and the great mystery of bourbon is you can put two barrels side by side in the same rack house that were distilled the same day in the same age and dumped in the same age and they're gonna taste different. They're not going to be identical. Mm -hmm. A lot of ethanol <laughs> compared to the 93 proof. It, it's a little hot, but it's 132 proof. You know what's <laughs> another interesting thing is before I could get it out, I was going to say I'm surprised at the lack of ethanol on this one. And maybe, yeah. Well, I, I shoved uh, my nose in there like an idiot, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, and your nose it, is much bigger than mine, too. You, so. <laughs> See how he treats me? If you're interested in being a co-host on So Into Bourbon, <laughs> prank me. It. Just kidding. So what are you getting on the nose here? So it's very, to me, very similar to what we just had, yeah. which is obviously it's the same mash bill, which, but I would expect it to be different right. since it's a barrel proof. I don't think it's a whole lot different. I don't get the chocolate. I, I get kind of the sweet and I get a little bit of baking spice on the nose. Yeah. Kind of that. that uh, I get the brown sugar. And a little burnt sugar, but mm -hmm. I, I don't get kind of the chocolate on it. But it, it's a it's a good nose. Cheers. Let's yep. uh, let's, let's see how check these it go. Out. <sighs> Different animal there. Um, big splash of spice. Just real spicy. Yep. Hits you right in the tongue as soon as it hits your mouth. It's like spicy, tingly, and it really kind of overpowers 
the other flavors. But then that kind of dissipates for me. And once you get kind of past that initial, it gives you that kind of ni- the, the 1910 sweet, chocolatey, but more of a dark chocolate. Yeah. Like not as sweet as the 1910. I agree. It's, it's got that chocolate, the bitterness, um, but the spice kind of, it overpowers it a mm. little bit. Um, well, it is. Which, which you would expect. It's 132. 132 right? proof. Having said that, though, I don't know if this was a blind. I don't know that I would guess it's that high. I would also agree. With it, yeah. it is not unrefined um, on a proof side of things. It's very flavorful. It's very nice. It, it leaves you drinking. So one of the things when I'm drinking barrel proof is, does it leave you wanting more? Because if you drink a barrel proof and you're like, oh man, that's, that's going to be tough. Like heartburn, it's going to mm. be tough to choke that down. This is the opposite. That as soon as it hit my mouth, I kind of start, you know, salivating. I'm like, I need some more of that. Mm. And this, this gives me that. Um, now, which do I like better? Which do you like better, Charlie? Uh, I'll take the 93. I will 100% agree with you. And that's uh, a weird thing for me mm-hmm. because I'm, I'm a barrel-proof guy. I, I love the barrel-proofs, but that 93 is maybe one of the best bottles that yeah. I've had in a long time. That, the 1910 is, to me, much more enjoyable, much more drinkable, much more approachable. The barrel-proof has... Everything that the ninety-three proof has, but it's to me, it's overpowered. A little wild proof. Yeah, it's a it's a little wild. Yeah, um, that ninety-three and it proof lingers. Is, yeah. It lingers for a long time. The nine the nineteen ten is so refined. It is, and yeah. and usually you don't get big flavors. We recently did a review with the old crow chestnut. Mm-hmm. And, and I keep, we keep going back to that chestnut. If you haven't watched the episode, take a look. It, it's an interesting kind of contrast between today's bourbon. That was an 86 proof. 93 is not a huge jump up from that. But it's unusual for a lower proof bourbon, and 93 is not a low proof, but to have kind of the complexity of flavor and a big, bold flavor, usually it's very muted. This is very refined, but very flavorful all at the same time. Well, it's interesting that you would bring that up because when I first took a sip of the 1910, that was the first thing that came to mind was the the old crow chessman. And I thought, no, that's just recency bias or something. But to me, so I didn't say anything. I didn't want you to look at me sideways. It really, really reminded me of that. Yeah, the, the chessman, and I think it's it's not in terms of, at least for me, it wasn't necessarily the flavors. It was just the the drinkability, the drinkability, mm-hmm. and the fact that the presence, the flavor, the presence of those flavors are there, and not only there, but like you can really taste mm-hmm. them. Like we're we are not world class palates <laughs> and Wait, being able to don't describe tell them that. They know. <laughs> they, <laughs> trust me. They know. This is a great bottle of bourbon to introduce people to other flavors that maybe you, you've never had chocolate in a bourbon or been able to taste that or coffee. Go grab a bottle of this and, and see what you get out of it because I'm I'm telling you, uh, after we cut, I may drink a lot more of that bottle because it's that's a great bottle of bourbon. Well, and so I just took my second sip of the barrel proof. And I will say on the second sip, I was able to pick up a little bit more mm-hmm. of the actual flavor notes yep. that were similar to the 1910. The, so the, the initial, I guess the initial shock of the yeah, your, 132 your proof like, has okay, worn off. Doing so that? Okay. Regardless yeah. though, Go with the 1910. Yeah. I would, that's what I would do. And this is what's awesome about Old Forester. And I have drank many, many, many uh, single barrels. And they are all so unique. So if you see a single barrel Old Forester, buy it. If your local restaurant, your bar, your, your liquor store does one, get one. Because they are all very unique. And you will be really surprised at how something that is so uniform 
the same distillery, same mash bill, same barrels, same char level, same rack houses for the most part are going to have such unique flavors. So yeah, what can't go wrong. Old you, Forester, you can't go wrong. You cannot go wrong. And to Glenn's point, uh, if you have the opportunity to come to Louisville, Kentucky, Whiskey Roll, Old Forester is right there. Michter's is down the road from that. There's amazing bars and restaurants. Rabbit Hole. Um, who else? Evan is, Williams. Evan Williams Experience. Peerless. Peerless. Um, I'm missing someone. Who's who's the other Angels one? Envy. Angels MV is the other one. Um, so you can stay in the heart of downtown Louisville and walk to all of those distilleries and have an amazing time and leave with some amazing bottles. And it seems like every month there's an, another announcement that another distillery is going to yep. open up downtown. So Yeah. And you'll be visit. in our backyard so you can message us. Absolutely. Maybe we'll meet yeah. you for a drink. You come to town, hit us up. Maybe we can... Maybe we can uh, We'd love to meet our fan. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> anyway, let's wrap this one up. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Follow us uh, on Instagram. Follow us on Instagram, So in the Bourbon Facebook group. Join our Facebook group, uh, So in the Bourbon on Facebook, Whiskey Realtor on TikTok. And I think that about wraps it up, Charlie. Follow me on MySpace. Is MySpace a thing still? You were on MySpace, I'm sure. <laughs> um, thank you for watching. As always, like and subscribe, and we will see you on the next episode. We out. Live, are we? We're live. Semi live. Where it puts the lotion on its skin. I have a collection of moths if you'd like to see them. I don't know. Oh my God. Sounds like a you problem. All right. It's a YouTube problem. Yeah. Be his ass. Hold on. What? All right.